going on, creeps? Doc is back for his triumphant return from the promised land of Orlando, Florida. So, yeah, waking up every day uh, to 80, 90 degree weather, and now waking up every morning to 20 degrees is not very sick, but what is sick is me, because I'm not feeling too great after uh, partying so hard and... <clears throat> traveling on that airplane after I think those germs may have ruminated and uh, poisoned me. But, sincerely, what is sick is that I can come back to you for what I promised. Some more of these fun little venture videos. So, I'm going to be giving you um, a new episode of the podcast tomorrow, so enough about my trip to Florida. And actually, for a little heads up, I might be giving you an extra episode this week on the new Halloween movie. Because I did get a chance to see that at Disney World and the movie was uh, exceptional in my opinion. But today, like I said, we're getting back to uh, one of our key topics of mythology here at Horrid Lore. Of course, I am referring to the Venture Brothers. So, as I had promised, I was going to be looking back from uh, Season 6 to the end of Season 7 again to attempt to tie some loose ends together, uh, pack some shit in that maybe we didn't get to initially. Until I realized that um, this story actually has been building towards what we got since the fifth season. We got a little bit in there, but it was definitely kind of a significant amount when you actually think about it. So we're going to be starting today with one of my favorite episodes of all time, Spanic Opera! An odd choice, I know, but in hindsight, this episode was, for me at least, the first instance where I realized just how much of a Machiavellian monster Jonas Sr. actually was. So let's start from the start. It's 1968. And uh, Team Venture has traveled, the original OG Team Venture has traveled to Greece because they were invited to attend the wedding of Jacqueline Kennedy and Aristotle Onassis. And as I'm sure many of you keen eyed creeps have realized, that in the opening scene of that episode, when they're leaving to go to the wedding, that the monarch's late parents, Don Fitzcarraldo, aka the Blue Morpho, and Mrs. Fitzcarraldo, I don't think we got little Malcolm Monarch's mother's name can be seen on the speedboat with Jonas Venture Sr., who leaves Rusty alone with Helper. Great idea. Uh, and, as we all know, the Islanders decided to kidnap young Rusty while they were gone for ransom, and also it was a political protest because of uh, all the inequality in Greece, which was personified by Aristotle Onassis, and even more, the wedding of him and John F. Kennedy's ex-wife. Little history lesson here on this one, creeps. But, as we also know, once they have Rusty... Uh, no one comes to his rescue. Jonas doesn't even fucking respond. So three days pass without him even realizing that his son is missing. So Rusty's kidnappers, much like uh, the monarch in, I think, the second episode of the first season, where he feels so bad for the Ventures because Rusty's not responding. But I guess it turns out the exact same thing happened to Rusty when he was a child also because these kidnappers feel so bad for him for being ignored because his father is definitely out drinking and carousing for these three days. They fucking create this Spanakopita holiday to entertain and console the young child who they themselves have kidnapped, and they're the reason he needs to be consoled, but not really, because he has such a fucking awful dad. Um, we we kind of got some, you know, romanticized, glorified visions of him from Jonas Venture Jr., but Jonas Venture Jr. never knew Jonas Venture Sr., and... This was the real Jonas Venture Sr. He was such a, a marvel to the world. He was a, what every man in the world would want to be. But in reality, he fucking... He wasn't doing shit for the people that were closest to him. I mean, just just look how much he fucked up Rusty. And look how much... Rust, I mean, Rusty has done a marginally better job than his own father did, which isn't saying much. But look look at the number he did on Rusty. Look how fucked up Rusty is. Uh, I think it's just, that is one of the first things that really made me notice that something was stinky in the Venture House back then, and they really, I mean, it's really fun when they show those flashbacks, but they're really kind of sparse with them. So, I mean, like I said, it was a very humorous notion to me initially, but now this is a story that maybe more than anything else flat out defines Rusty's inability to cope with the real world. He's just such a fucking miserable man that his fondest childhood memory was literally being kidnapped 
and having a fake festival named after a g- disgusting Greek spinach pie in the poorest village in Greece. And it's all because good old Jonas Venture was living it up at the wedding and kicking some ass when L. Ron Hubbard came and attempted to crash the party. Um, which actually, I was thinking to myself, I was wondering why everybody goes under fire so hard for, or maybe not even that as much, just what the but the, what you're allowed to say about L. Ron Hubbard and Scientology, like if they think that maybe it's cool or a plug or whatever, as long as you really don't say anything outside of the book of Dianetics or whatever, like South Park just got in so much trouble because they straight up revealed all this shit that you have to fork over so much money to figure out. And, and I mean, I don't know, maybe nobody even saw this, but I just think it's weird that they didn't get any kind of blowback for this. And again, they made L. Ron Hubbard a villain, which kind of, which is what made me kind of think that in the first place. But it was something that seemed justified to me at first because somebody had to save the day. But in doing so, he left his son to be kidnapped and unattended for half a fucking week. Like, how is Helper supposed to take care of him? I know Helper's a very empathetic uh, droid that he is um, capable of emoting and everything, but he's definitely not able to take care of a human child. <laughs> This is just a very bizarre and kind of deep-cutting episode, I feel like. And I think because I've watched this one so many times that once all of these revelations came to light, it really didn't shock me at how bad of a guy Jonas Venture Sr. actually fucking was. And, I mean, this isn't even the kicker. I mean, after giving Rusty the best week of his life, his father and the rest of the Venture clique go to these fucking would-be captors who ended up being, like, the best babysitters that Rusty could ever dream of, and they beat him to fucking pulp without saying so much as a fucking word. And, I I mean, and that's what leads the main uh, captor, Georgios, to create the tradition of Spanakopita for Rusty to return and pump money into the village. Because he knew that Jonas Venture Sr. was just as bad, if not worse, of a guy than Aristotle Onassis. And he's somebody that kind of deserved to be bled dry. But when it came to Rusty, honestly, in this instance, it's kind of um, it's a mercy to him. Because it's the only place in the series where we see Rusty truly at peace and, and happy. And... All this blossoms from something so insanely horrible that he essentially had to reprogram his fucking brain so that he could feel something other than complete and utter fucking misery because at least they paid some attention to him. It's just, it's very dark when you sit down and actually break it down and think about it. And I I guess to make short of a drawn-out point, this was the first time I was sincerely put off by Jonas Venture Sr., He was shown as a seriously neglectful father, but this was just, I mean, in the past, he was shown as, like, you know, I mean, he'd go off and carouse and cavort like a fucking, you know, shitty rich guy, but it didn't really just show him as this fucking borderline monster. Like, the attack on Georgios and his men in the end just always left this awful taste in the back of my mouth. And even more so... Now that all of Jonas Ventures Sr.'s dirty laundry has been aired out. I mean, a lot of people seem to think that the Venture lore was thrown out the window with the Morphic Trilogy when he was revealed to be alive, but I personally think that it was the way the story had always been going and heading towards. We were just asking all of the wrong questions, and I think a lot of people might have been too embarrassed to admit that they were asking all those wrong questions and that maybe they never expected any of this shit to happen. I don't know. But that's what I'm going to be doing in these next uh, few installments is I'm going to be unpacking the mythology that led up to that morphic trilogy that uh, turned the Ventureverse on its head so insanely. But I thought what better place to start than uh, the place where I first had a really bad feeling. Like, you know, it, it, it really... At the after credit scene where they fuck up Georgios and his crew after they made Rusty so happy just bothered me. And I'm just going to get into everything else that led up to how fucking terrible of a person Jonas Venture Sr. was and how that saga played out. So 
Until tomorrow, creeps of the podcast. Until next week, I'll bring you another one of these. Doc out.